You're listening to the Call Kent podcast, where Kent C. Dodds answers questions and gives insights to software engineers like you. Now, let's hear the call. Hi, Kent. <clears throat> My name is Milen. And I have a question regarding the backend and the way that you personally write in Express.js. I saw a certain pattern that uh, you use once I finished your testing Node Apps course inside the testing JavaScript uh, bundle. Basically, in all of the materials on the internet, including some libraries like NestJS, are trying to box you and teach you to write requests and handle requests in Express like router, uh, accepting the call, middleware, which can be authentication and logging, for example, and then the controller, which is de facto endware, for lack of a better word. And then inside the control, you can have your sub-actions, which are perfectly reusable, like check for payload integrity, check for duplicates, uh, persist, and so on. Now, in your code, you have a completely different approach, uh, which I find very interesting, which is, for example, router accepting the call, then you have middleware for authentication and logging, then you have another middleware, which is checking for payload integrity. And then you have another middleware, which is checked for duplicates. And then you have another, just another middleware for persistence. So to reiterate, you treat the controller, the controller functions themselves as nothing but middleware, which is really mind-bending for me. And it's really shifting the way uh, that I think in Express when I write my backends. Can you please share more light on this approach? Um, and I feel like there's a lot of architectural and creative know-how that you might share in the back-end world uh, that the entire JS community can benefit. Looking forward to hearing from you and have a good one. And that was the call. Here's what Kent had to say. Hey, Milan. Thank you so much for the question. So I will link to the code that you're talking about in the notes of the episode so that people can look at it themselves. Um, but yes, at the time that I created Testing Node Apps uh, Workshop, the app that um, I created uh, was, uh, yeah, uh, a Node App uh, had authentication um, list items and um, that sort of thing. So uh, it's basically like a, a API for uh, the Bookshelf app that I uh, have in Epic React. So um, anyway, the idea it is with the, the way that I structured this was I had a controller file and then that exported a bunch of different middlewares uh, that I would then use in, when hooking up uh, Express. And if you look at that controller file, you're going to see uh, a lot of um, checking the request and response, sending a response um, if you know things aren't um, set up properly, um, adding things to um, the request and response, like um, uh, attaching them to the requ request and response so that um, future middlewares can reference those things. Uh, so for example, there's there's one called set list item, uh, which will get the list items by the ID from the params, and then we'll set uh, rec.list item um, uh, so that uh, a future thing like maybe delete list item can use that um, to just say, you know, rec.listitem.id. Uh, remove that from the database, whatever. Um, so this is the way that I did it then. I do not recommend this. Um, and in fact, I don't recommend middleware at all um, anymore. So middleware, uh, for just as an example, uh, middleware is very difficult to um, get proper typings um, for TypeScript. And a lot of people will say, yeah, that's a problem with TypeScript. But no, if TypeScript, if TypeScript has a hard time knowing what you're doing, then humans probably have a hard time knowing what you're doing as well. And you don't really have any guarantees that um, that rec.list item uh, is available. Where I got this idea was actually from my time at PayPal. Um, and I built the testing node apps workshop when I was at PayPal. Um, and so that's kind of like we were very uh, express heavy, very um, middleware heavy. Um, and so this is like, it, it felt clean to me, um, having these individual functions be um, like very specific and, and highly reusable uh, pieces of middleware, uh, which of course you can test independently and everything. But um, I, I found out that it's very, very difficult to keep track of um, where properties uh, come from, uh, properties on the request and response object. Um, 
and and yeah just monkey patching in general or just like adding properties to objects like that um, anywhere in the chain of middleware uh, just makes it really difficult at scale so i do not recommend this and instead if i were to do this all over again um, i would have um, just one giant function for every route um, uh, and then call into other functions that um, can get me the values that I'm looking for from the request and response. And I would not set anything on the request or response at all. Um, additionally, I would not use Express uh, for this. Uh, I do use Express on my website for uh, some things, but uh, eventually, especially when Remix supports um, running things before the loaders run, uh, then I will move all of that stuff into Remix. Um, so if you can, um, try to, to put everything into Remix that you need to. Um, I, I can't do that yet because uh, there are things um, like redirects that I want to happen um, for special URLs that I, I want to redirect the user before I bother calling middleware. Um, I need to um, proxy some um, my OG images and stuff like that. I, I have a special uh, thing that generates a URL for that um, that I need to have run before the uh, middleware run. A, a lot of different things like that. So as soon as Remix supports being able to um, run some code before the middleware runs, then I'll probably get rid of Express altogether, not use any middleware at all and just use um, Remix. And uh, yeah, everything will just be functions that start at a particular URL route. And so yes, I do not recommend uh, the approach that I, um, that I have in testing node apps. Now that said, I do still recommend uh, taking that workshop uh, because in, in that workshop, um, I'm t teaching you testing, not express architecture or anything like that. And on top of that, a lot of people have that type of architecture. Maybe, as you said, not a lot of you haven't seen this particular architecture before. But uh, regardless of um, whether it's multiple functions or just like one giant function, uh, the testing is going to be the same. So um, I do still recommend the testing um, uh, a workshop and, and learning that. But as far as the architecture from that example app, um, yeah, I don't recommend middleware at all uh, for the reasons mentioned. I hope that is helpful to you and I hope you have a marvelous day. This has been the Call Kent podcast. Learn more about Kent at kentcdods.com and get your own questions answered at kentcdods.com slash calls.